Better late than ever, right? Well, I hope you feel that way, because this is a late edition of our What's New video. Not that you care about our excuses, but I blame Autodesk University, and I have no regrets. Anyway, I'll try to be brief as you've probably already read Kaching's blog 50 times by now, and are already putting these new features to work. Starting with generative design because, well, it's free until the end of the year, in case you still hadn't heard, you're probably hoping to get a jump start on learning the ins and outs. The quickest introduction would be to see one of the numerous samples available to every user at the bottom of their data panel. There you can get an idea of what to expect in terms of setup, results, and outcomes. So if nothing else, dig in, solve, and tinker with these. Wanting more? Well, in addition to that, we have almost 40 lessons as a part of three tracks on the learning portal. These self-paced lessons provide the files and guidance to enable anyone to move far beyond tinkering to begin to master the generative design process. Click the link on screen to go there now. If that's still not enough, there's even a Coursera offering for Autodesk Generative Design for Manufacturing Specialization, with the first month of learning offered free of charge. And there has never been a better time to start using generative design. With the recent promotion of two axis cutting and two and a half axis milling from preview to production and outcome cost estimation, thanks to our partnership with Apriori, there's more power than ever before. For cost estimations, Apriori uses the manufacturing process and annual production volume to generate insights that can be found when exploring the results. Make sure to turn on the preview to be able to do this. Those cost estimates allow for a more inclusive trade-off analyses, going beyond just performance, material, and manufacturing method. Moving on from generative design, our next focus will be on usability, where we cleared up an overly persistent cloud export notification, which you previously couldn't close, and improved the dialog when translating files. Now when you upload CAD data, the upload dialog will show a cube icon to indicate that it'll be translated into a Fusion 360 design and what will not be. In addition to that, we improved the convert to sheet metal workflow to now work or show in direct modeling, which makes sense because by default, Fusion 360 will open third-party CAD data in direct modeling, right? Anyway, when you use this command in direct modeling, all it really does is it tells you that to use it, you'll need to turn on history and it'll do it for you. That does it for this wrap up. Check back real soon for yet another update.